We're going to start this puppy up. Clear? Prop? And welcome back to Building the Afforda Plane. In this part, we're mounting the rudder and vertical stabilizer to the aircraft. This is a big step because it really makes your aircraft look like something nice. And if you want to help support these videos and make sure they keep going forward and get some inside construction tips, we look forward to you becoming a member on Patreon. So let's get started. Now we want to create the rudder horn. This was in our plans, drawing 35, and I printed this on cardstock and cut it out. Uh, before you print, before you go any further, make sure the dimensions they show are actual, actual dimensions of what you're cutting out. I had to reduce mine, I think, to 93% to get the distance between these two to be the eight inches. Um, just put a ruler up to what you printed out and see if it's close. It doesn't have to be exactly on. There's nothing super critical about any of the dimensions here, but it should be, you know, reasonably close. Now I traced it out on a piece of 90 thou aluminum stock. And there we go. So I can go and uh, cut this. Now, you might wonder what this is about up here. I took a ruler and drew a line up the middle of these holes so it came exactly up the center here. Our problem is, or our challenge, is to make a nice curve here. Now, if you can do that with your bandsaw, that's great. You don't have to do anything I'm gonna show you, but uh, some of you have bandsaws that won't follow curves very nicely and it's hard to get a sander inside there unless you have a cylindrical type sander. Uh, so what's commonly done for something like this is to uh, understand what the radius of this is and that's approximately one inch, a one inch radius curve. And then I drew a half inch up and marked it and what we'll do here, what I will do here is prior to cutting this out we'll drill a one inch hole using a hole saw centered right here and that will give a nice round curve it'll put a it'll put a one inch hole in the sheet but that'll provide a one inch curve here and then when we go to cut we're simply going to cut down until we hit the tangent of that hole same way this way so that'll leave us a nice curve uh, these are not too bad. You're just going to cut off as close as you can with your bandsaw and then take this to your sander to get the nice round shape. And same with the bottom here. You'll cut off as close as you can with your bandsaw and then use your sander to get these outside corners. And that will work out just nice. And the only thing left we have is placement of two holes. We can do that a little bit later and then also three holes for attaching our horn to the bottom of the rudder. And I don't think we want these holes to be that big. We're going to put in 3 16 rivets, so these will end up being 3 16 holes. And here's our horn finished. and I have drilled the holes just eighth of an inch at this time. Now let's go see where this fits onto the rudder itself. To properly align this with the rudder, what we want to do is take a ruler, doesn't matter what it is, just a straight edge, and we want to clamp it on so that the edge is even with the center of those holes. And here we go. Basically, the top of the ruler is even with the center of the holes. Now we're going to hold this up to the rudder so that we can get the alignment just right. Okay, we're looking at the bottom of the rudder. The rudder is the one with the long leg down here. 
and no hinge here. Make sure you got the bottom. And I've marked with little tick marks the center of the top and the bottom of the tube. And now we're going to take this horn and also notice the line that you previously drew down to the center or the side, well, the bottom of the tube. And what we want to do is line up our edge, which is, of course, at the center of these mounting holes, with the center of the rudder tube by lining it up on those marks. And then look for the line and simply mark these three positions when you see the straight line through the middle of them. And then those three marks we will drill for now just with a 1 8 inch hole because we'll enlarge it later and we can Clico it in place. So we do not want to rivet this on yet because we want to be able to remove it while we're installing the rudder and we may have some other operations to perform on it. In preparation for mounting the vertical fin, we want to locate the rear post. Now that'll be the one with the hinges on it. And we want to make a hole half inch up on the center line of the tube. So I'm going to make a 1 inch, 1 8 inch hole here and then I'm going to flip the whole thing over and do the same thing, put a hole on the other side of this tube. What this will allow us to do is mount a stainless steel U-bracket onto both sides. Of course the hole we drilled was just 1 8 so it's very small and the hole in the bracket is larger but we can save the final drilling to later and that will compensate for any errors we make. So now we're going to take this bracket over to the rear of the fuselage. The vertical stabilizer, of course, attaches at the rear, so we're looking at the very back of the fuselage. And right on the top here, we want to draw a center line from left to right. And then we're going to use the steel, stainless steel U bracket. And we want it all the way to the back, flush, nearly flush, with the back edge and centered. And we'll mark the hole. Now you may notice that right in the way is the rearmost nut and bolt, so we need to remove that before drilling the hole and after we're all done with our installation we can put that back in. So with our center line and have this flush mark the hole carefully and then center punch it and we're going to end up drilling that to the quarter inch and our bolts going to come up from the bottom up because of the clearance issue with this bolt and then the nut will go right here. Here I have the bolt installed. It was a tight fit. I had to actually tap it with a hammer to get it to turn the corner, but then it, it popped up fine. And then our youth channel will go on top. And then a nut. And then once this is in place, we can put our bolt back into its location. Now I have installed the fin by simply using a Clico on each side and the front just sits on the top. I used a small wire to temporarily hold this down 
because it will rotate backwards when we add our rudder. So our next step now is to add our rudder to the back and see how that fits. And we need to attach at least two pins. We don't have to put all three of them on. This is just a fitting. Now up at the front, we're going to end up using another stainless steel U-bracket, which will fit something like this. Now what we want to look for is that the distance between the hinges here, and it's a little over an inch, in fact, you see that I get a little bit of play in here. What we want to do is make sure that down here, we have that same distance. In other words, that everything is vertical here and the distance between these two tubes and the back of the fuselage and the tube are the same. Now, the adjustment for that is the fact that this is on a pivot here, the distance here. As I raise and lower this, it will change the distance back here. So, if you are happy with the fact that this is all vertical and the distance here is the same as here, then you know you're in a good position to mark this. Now, this bracket will be centered on the tube. Look at your line going up the tube. And we need to leave a little bit of room for the bolt head, which we're going to drill straight down in there. So if you need to trim this, that's fine. I'm going to take this back to the bench, put a bolt through the hole, going down so that I know just how high the bolt head is and then fit it on the bench here, find the center line and drill through. That way when I bring it back, I can mark this very carefully with this installed. I can mark where the U-bracket is going to go, remove the U-bracket and the fin and then drill my hole straight down because we'll have a bolt that holds this U-bracket in starting from the top and then with the nut on the bottom. So I'm going to make my final fitting now of the, the steel bracket to the tube over on the bench. Simply take it apart by pulling these two plecos and pulling the rudder off. Now here I'm setting up the forward leg of the fin where it interfaces with the steel U-bracket. Notice I'm going for the center on my tube and I'm raising it enough so that there is clearance for the bolt head underneath. I can go ahead and drill this and pin it and then carry it over to the fuselage so I can mark the hole for this bolt. So I drilled up to 3 16 with a Clico one side only. Now we'll carry the whole thing up to the fuselage install and then mark where this is to go. And after it's mounted and marked we can then drill from the other side all the way quarter inch bolt. After everything is in place and clecoed, I make some marks on the fuselage at the base of the bracket so that I can find that center hole exactly so it will all line up when we're done. And with another bracket in place it's easy to mark and find the center hole and now we know exactly where to drill. And of course we're going to drill a nice straight shot down to the bottom. Now we'll we will drill a very straight hole into the bottom of the tube. Use our little 90 to make sure we got a nice straight shot. And if it says it's good, it will be good. And then we'll open this up to the final quarter inch bolt size. And once the bracket is mounted, you can then 
drill up to final size and drill all the way through the tube to the other side. And same with the temporary Clico here. This needs to be opened up to a quarter inch and go all the way across for a bolt at both locations. And then we will be done. And there we have the vertical part of our tail feathers installed. Now it may seem a little rickety and that's okay. We don't want to put too much stress on this. It's only being held in by the two bolts. Eventually this will get wire cables uh, to tie from up here. Remember we left this open for a bolt and we'll get cables that will go down to our horizontal part and stiffen all of this up. But you should be happy you've arrived at this point. Now we got to work on the horizontal part. So guess what we're doing next time. That's right. So don't miss it. And in the meantime, back to building.